Hello, today we're going to talk about addition. So, we're going to talk about the concept of addition, and we're going to talk about some methods. But first, let's start with an example. So we're going to start with 3 plus 5, and we want to know what is 3 plus 5. Well, we know that we can represent 3 by 3 things. So let's draw 3 pink circles. And then for 5, let's draw 5 circles. And they were originally red, but let's go ahead and change them to a copper color. Okay, and we'll just change it over to copper. Okay, so now let's write down 3 and 5 next to it in gold. And now let's just count how many gold circles we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So in total, we have 8 gold circles. So 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay, so what is addition? Addition is how we combine things, or how we bring things together. And some examples of things that we might have laying around the house that we could add together would maybe be marbles, and we can put them together and combine them in a bag. Or crayons, and we can take a bunch of crayons from different places and put them in a box. And we want to know how many crayons are in that box. And maybe our last one is we have a bunch of coins laying around, and we know that we have maybe three coins, and we have five coins, and now we know that when we put them together, we have eight coins in total. So there are three ways that we can add things together. So the first way, or the first method, is to just draw it out, like we did with our first example at the beginning of the video. And uh, we've already seen an example, but let's go ahead and do another one. So it's good because it works for small numbers, um, but when we get into bigger numbers, or numbers that are far apart from each other, it can get really long and it might take up our whole paper and we won't be able to actually write it out. And lastly, uh, it's easy to make mistakes if we have, say, 10 plus 12, as we'll see in a future example, um, we might miscount when we're drawing our circles or collecting our things and counting them out. But first, let's look at 2 plus 2, a pretty simple example. So let's draw two circles in copper, two circles in gold. And we want to know what is 2 plus 2, or how many circles in total do we have? So let's draw four, or let's draw some circles. I already gave you the answer. And count them. So we, get, we count 1, 2, 3, 4 circles. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Now let's look at an example where we might not want to draw that out. So let's look at 10 plus 12. So we're going to draw 10 circles under it, um, under the 10. And we'll see that I accidentally draw two too many. And I actually draw 12 circles, and I have to erase two. Okay, next under the 12, let's draw 12 circles out. So we've already made a mistake. Hopefully we don't make another one on the 12. And we don't. And now what we want to do is we want to, uh, we can either redraw all the circles or we can just count it from there. So let's count them. 7, 8, 9, 10. Then we go over to the 12s. So we get 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So 10 plus 12 is 22. And we see why we wouldn't not want to necessarily use this method because it's kind of long to draw it all out. The second way, and the way that is commonly taught in schools, is to use a number line. So a number line is great when two numbers are close together, 
Um, it's a good way to visualize things without drawing things out. And it's harder to make mistakes with this method. However, uh, it can be kind of hard to represent this or draw it out or draw all the numbers that we need when our numbers are really far apart. So let's look at a couple of examples to see where it does work, and let's look at one where it doesn't work. Let's start by looking at 2 plus 2. So we'll draw our number line, and then we'll draw, uh, we'll make some tick marks on the number line for 0 all the way up to 7, because that's all I really have room for on this number line. But it should be enough for 2 plus 2. Um, now, I wanted to use 2 plus 2, but to demonstrate this a little bit more to see exactly what we're doing, let's make it 2 plus 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at 2, and we're going to move 3 to the right. So we start at the left one, and then we move the right number that many times to the right. So let's just draw it out to see what's going on. So we're going to start at 2, and then we're going to move three numbers to the right. So that's 1, that's 2, and that's 3. And the number we land on is what our result is. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So now let's look at an example where we wouldn't want to necessarily use this way to add two numbers together. So we're going to look at 1 plus 10. Now, we're going to draw a really big number line, because these numbers are pretty far apart from each other. So we're going to start at 0, and we're going to go all the way up to 17. And hopefully that is big enough. Okay, next, as before, we're going to start at 1, and we're going to move 10 places to the right and see what we land on. So here we count our places to make sure. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we added 10, and the number we land on is 11, so 1 plus 10 is 11. Now the final method for adding things together, and the one that is going to work really well for most of the things that we're going to add together, is used when we um, add bigger numbers. So we're going to use addition of single digit numbers and we're going to do that to add bigger numbers together. Now, this is great for adding big numbers. Um, if you know what you're doing, it's really hard to make a mistake and um, it's a really effective way and it's going to be used throughout your whole life. Now, there is a drawback, however. The, the bad part of this is that we do need to know how to add single-digit numbers together. So it does require a mastery of adding single-digit numbers. So let's look at a few examples, and we'll start with 14 plus 15. So let's first rewrite this so that we have our 1s all together and our 10s all together. So we'll write them one on top of the other. So 14 over 15, and we'll just add them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our 1s together. And when we do that, we get 4 plus 5, which is 9. So when we 
finally come to our answer of 9, we're going to write that under the 1s in our problem. Next, we're going to add our 10s, and we're going to do that in copper just to kind of see what's going on. So 1 plus 1, which are both of our 10s, is 2, and we put a 2 under the 10s, and so our final answer is 29. For our next example, let's take a look at 26 plus 32. So just as before, we're going to write them one on top of the other, so 26 on top of 32. And then we're going to look at our 1s, add those together. And then we're going to look at our 10s and add those together. So when we look at our 1s, we look at 6 plus 2, and 6 plus 2 is 8. So we're going to put an 8 under the 1s column. Next, we're going to look at our 10s. So we have 2 and 3, and when we add those together, we get 5. So our final answer is 58. Now, we don't have to be restricted to adding two-digit numbers together. We can do this for any number of digits. So let's wrap this up by doing an example of two three-digit numbers, and let's add those together. So 132 plus 254. So we're first going to add our ones together. 2 plus 4 equals 6, so we're going to put a 6 in the ones place. Next, we're going to look at our tens. So we get 3 plus 5, and that's 8, so we're going to put an 8 in our tens place. And finally, we're going to look at our hundreds place. And our hundreds, we have 1 plus 2 equals 3, so we put a 3 in the hundreds place, and our final answer is 386. Thank you for watching.